Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my August wrap-up. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you about all the books I read in August and I feel like this video is going to be kind of short because let's just say August wasn't my most successful reading month because I was on holiday and I was just generally out of the house doing stuff and so I didn't have as much time to read. Anyway, let's move on to what I did read. And the first book I read was In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead and this was a mystery thriller. And in this book we followed six characters, mainly one who was called Jessica, and they were reuniting 10 years after they finished college because they were all friends in college. But back then, 10 years before, there were actually seven of them, but one of their friends was murdered and there were some suspects, but no one was actually ever arrested for the crime. And now, 10 years later, when they are reuniting, there is someone who is making it their mission to discover what happened to the girl who was murdered 10 years ago. And so we get points of view from the past and the present and we also have different POVs from the different characters but like I said we follow mainly Jessica and we had a lot of theories, a lot of suspects, basically all the characters were suspects and I liked how we went through the different theories and suspects and every single one of them made sense for them to be the killer and there were some plot twists I guess that I enjoyed and I did not see coming and overall I really liked the book and the characters were all unlikable I didn't really connect with any of them I didn't like any of them but I think that was kind of the point and it worked in this story so I didn't mind that I didn't like the characters because like I said I think they needed to be like that and I really liked the mystery I liked how it was resolved I liked the plot twists but the last plot twist that was like in the last few sentences of the book, that one I kind of saw coming, so it was not, you know, a perfect mystery thriller, but overall I still really enjoyed and I gave it four stars. Okay, so the next book I read was The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, and this was book four and also the last book in the Books of Babel series, which is a fantasy series that I have been reading and since this is the fourth book I'm obviously not gonna get into any details of the plots but if you want to hear about that and see my reactions to what was actually happening I have a reading vlog for this book that I will link in the description but moving on this is actually the lowest rated book in the series on Goodreads but actually I loved it and we followed many different POVs from different characters, just like we did in book three. In book one and two, it was just the main character, but in this one and the previous, we followed many different characters. And I actually really like that because we got to know the characters a lot better, especially one specific character that until this book, I didn't care about because we haven't really had as much time with him as with the others. And so I didn't know him that well. I didn't care about him but we opened this book with him and we followed him for almost 200 pages which some people complain about and I understand that but me personally I really liked to get to know him and actually really starting to like him and all the other characters I continued to love one of them that I didn't really like that much actually really grew on me and one of the characters from book three two I don't exactly remember when he appeared but he was like one of the bad guys he actually had a good redemption and i in the, the story actually liking him as well and in terms of the main character i loved seeing him changing and adapting to living in the tower even though maybe he didn't change for the better but he changed in the way that he needed to survive and i love to follow his journey and i love him as a character and also the story like it started being one thing, the series started being one thing, and then it kind of changed to a whole other bigger plot. But in the end, it kind of came full circle because it, like it ended up being about the thing that it started being. And it was way faster paced than the other books and it was action packed. It had 
great fight scenes and the ending wasn't happy but it was a good ending and I have to say that like it was an open ending and I usually don't like it when things are not tied up in a bow and finished but actually in this case I didn't mind and overall I really really loved the book and I loved the whole series and I give this one 4.5 stars. Okay, so next I read The Recovery Agent by Janet Ivanovich and this was a thriller and the first book in a new series called Gabriella Rose, which is the name of the main character. And so in this book we obviously follow Gabriella and she is a recovery agent, which means that she can find objects or people that other people want found. And we start the book following her on a mission and after that mission ends, she goes back home and her hometown is struggling financially and so is her family. And she decides to follow like a family legend because she is, she might be the descendant of Blackbeard, the pirate. And so she's going to basically try to follow a treasure map. But the treasure map is actually in her ex-husband's house. So they need to work together and they end up going to Peru where they are going to follow the map. And I didn't love this book. I didn't hate it either, but I definitely didn't love it. And I think that might be because I didn't connect with the characters. I didn't really connect with the main characters specifically. And also there was like a romance thing going on that I did not care about in the slightest. And the plot, even though it sounded really exciting and interesting, in theory, I ended up not really caring that much. And the pacing was kind of off to me. Most of the book felt very rushed, but having said that, it was still a good time. Like I had a good time reading it. It was fun. It was entertaining. It just wasn't anything like I was very invested in or, you know, excited, thrilled to read, but it wasn't bad. It was okay. And I gave it three stars. Okay, so next I read Crossroads of Twilight by Robert Jordan and this was book 10 in the Wheel of Time series, which is an epic fantasy series that I have been reading since last year. And once again, since this is book 10 in the series, I'm obviously not going to get into the plot, but I have a reading vlog in my channel that I will link in the description if you want to hear about that. And just like the couple previous books in the series, this wasn't a very exciting read. Not a lot has been happening, not um, a lot of plot has been progressing. And so I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it because we mostly, not only, but mostly follow characters that I like. And like the one character that I hate was not in the book. So that was a plus. And also like, even though the plot wasn't really progressing that much, we had some interesting conversations with some of the characters that I like. Others were just like there and I was just fine to follow them. But others were actually, you know, having interesting discussions and conversations, which I did enjoy. But on the other hand, this was the weakest ending of any book in the series, in my opinion, because there wasn't like anything like wow happening, you know? So this was definitely my least favorite ending, but it wasn't my least favorite book. That was the previous one, book nine. And so I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I was okay with it. And I also gave this one three stars. So next I read The Red Palace by June Orr. And this was a historical fiction and mystery and it was one of my anticipated releases for this year. And so this book was set in Korea in 1758. And we follow, okay, before we get into the names, I just wanna say that I know I'm gonna say these names wrong and I am sorry. So we follow Hyun and she is a palace nurse. And one day or one night, whatever, four women are found dead. And the suspicion falls on our main character's teacher, mentor, another nurse. And Hyun knows that her teacher would never do that. And so she is determined to figure out who 
actually committed those murders. And so she teams up with a police inspector called Yojin and they start working together to uncover who killed those women. And there are some rumors circling around that the prince was actually the one who killed those women, but there are some other suspects to investigate. And I want to start by saying that I absolutely loved the main character. She was the sweetest, most adorable person ever. And she was also so determined to do whatever she had to do to prove her teacher's innocence. And I also like the police guy. I didn't care about the romance though, but that might be a me thing. Also, I really liked the mystery and how they worked together to go through the different theories, how they eliminated suspects and how things made sense. And so, yeah, I really liked the book and I gave this one four stars. Next, I read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. And this is a fantasy horror that was another one of my anticipated releases for this year. And this is also a retelling of The Fall of the Owls of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, but I have never read that book, so I didn't really know what to expect. Also, I'm going to be talking about this book in an upcoming vlog, so I'm not going to get into much details. But the premise of this book is that we are following Alex, who is a retired soldier. And Alex receives a letter from their friend Madeline. And in that letter, she says that her brother Roderick thinks that she is dying. And so Alex rushes to their house. And their house is the, the Usher house the house of Usher, because they are the Ushers. And even before Alex enters the house, they notice that there are some weird things in the atmosphere, like in the woods around the house. And there is like a weird lake and there are a lot of mushrooms everywhere. And even the wildlife is acting strangely. And then Alex gets to the house and Madeline is not acting any better than the wildlife outside. And she does look like she is indeed dying. And so Alex is gonna try to figure out what is causing Madeline's illness and also why everything is so strange surrounding the house. And like I said, I won't get into details, but I love the creepy atmosphere, the disgusting descriptions. It was just so good. And the ending wasn't like exactly everything I wanted it to be, but it was still a good ending. I feel like most people would be happier with this ending than with the ending I wanted. So again, that's a me problem. But I loved this book and I gave it 4.5 stars. And the seventh and final book I read in August was The Ark by Ben Oliver, which is the third and final book in the Loop trilogy. And again, since this is the last book in the series, I'm not gonna get into any details of the plot, but this is a science fiction dystopian kind of thing, and it sets on Earth in the future after there has been a third world war. And the characters that we're following are sort of the resistance against the people in charge. Actually, in the beginning of this book, we start following a new character that had never appeared before, and at first I really didn't like him, but then he started seeing things differently. So I did start to like him and I ended the book actually really, really liking that character. And also the other characters that we already knew, I also continue to love. And I love these books because they are so fast paced, so action packed. They're so easy and quick to get through and I love them. However, in this one, I don't know if the others were like this and I didn't notice or if they were better in that sense. But in this particular book, I felt like the dialogue between some of the characters sometimes was kind of strange, like that's not how people would talk. I don't know, it felt weird. But apart from that, like I said, I really loved how fast-paced, action-packed it is. And the ending of this book, like, I like happy endings as much as any person, but I also like it when there are consequences for the character's actions. You know, something bad happens, there is suffering because it feels like, you know, it feels more real. It feels like they did something and they are paying for it. And in this case, they are definitely paying for it. So it wasn't, you know, the happiest 
possible ending, but it felt realistic and I really liked that. And so I really liked this as a conclusion to the series and I gave this one 4.5 stars. And so yeah, these were the seven books I read in August and this is everything for this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, give it a like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye!